you know, no matter how much work you're putting in, because I think that was the part that was bothering me the most. I knew, like, well, I'm bringing the exclusive stories. I'm I'm one of the top reporters. They call on me for these particular stories. Why am I not moving to this Monday through Friday main gig? And, you know, as I said now, I know that your time is your time. No matter what it is that you're doing, you can apply this to any part of your life. Your time is absolutely your time. When it's your time, nobody can stop you. Welcome to another episode of Around the Way Podcast, where we help you get around your obstacles and find a way to redesign your life. We are here with the superstar in the Charlotte community. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Thank <laughs> you for having me on. No, but... for sure. So before we get into it, before we really dive into like pulling back the curtain on who you are, can you introduce yourself and talk about, I guess, how you're impacting lives? Absolutely. So my name is Destiny McKeever. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm a reporter currently at Fox 46 in Charlotte. And um, I would say I'm impacting lives by doing what I do every day. So my job is to, um, currently I'm a morning news reporter, so I get up and I am on bright and early at like 3.30 is when I start my shift, but we get on at 5. (laughs) 3.30 a.m., bright and early, but then we start our shift at 5, actually, you know, reporting on TV. So I feel like my role right now is to just um, tell people stories, you know, like authentically. A lot of times, you know, we don't have, we don't see people like me on the news. So, um to be that representation for a lot of people is just really rewarding. And that's what I feel like my calling is at this moment in my life. Wonderful. Yeah. I guess what led you to what led you to believing that that's your calling right now in life? So, first of all, I got into it um, just kind of organically. I would say, you know, a lot of people can say, like, I grew up wanting to do a certain thing. Um, That wasn't really my story. So I kind of like stumbled into it, if you will. So um, just long story short, I basically declared it as my major in college because I was doing like a process of elimination. So I'm like, what am I good at? What am I not good at? And I was trying to pick my major at that time. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So I started saying, you know, I'm good at writing. I'm good at speaking. um, I'm good at um, talking to people. So I was like, hmm, what, what does that sound like? That sounds like communications. So I went ahead, declared that, and I was like, um, if I don't change my major, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't change my major all throughout college, and I did really well. Um, actually went on in that early, you know, in the early stages and helped produce a student-led newscast, and it aired on PBS. So Mm -hmm. we did all those things, and I felt really accomplished in that. And so I was like, hey, not only am I using, you know, those three skills that I named, but I'm, like, really, um, you know, impacting people, like, doing this. Like, this is really great. So I felt a sense of belonging early on, and I just stuck with it, and I've been doing it now for about nine years, eight, nine years. That's dope. That's dope. So I I feel like what you said, like, is a gift, right? Because, and and you even overlooked it. You said when you were in school, you went through like a process of elimination Mm -hmm. where you were looking at, you know, what am I good at? What am I not good at? You wrote down a list. The average person doesn't do that. Wow. The average college kid shit, the average adult doesn't do that at all, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about what you went through or what you even did, right? That's that's a gift to being able to do that. Like to being able to see and process and be self-aware enough and reflect enough to being able to do that. And now it's transitioned and transformed not only your life, but other people's lives as well. So I guess my question for you is, could you walk me through the process of what even, I guess, led you to knowing how to do that? Was it somebody that introduced this to you? Was it just kind of innately inside of you? Or what happened that led you to doing that? Okay. So I would say um, growing up, like I grew up 
just really, and and I say this just as humbly as I know how, like really, as you said, self-aware and just on top of my game always. Mm-hmm. So my mom and my dad, my stepdad is who kind of was in the house and raised me, helped raise me. Um, they didn't have to really coach me a lot into like, hey, you know, these are the things you need to do. Make sure your room is clean. Make sure, you know, you have your chores done. Make sure that you do your homework. Those types of things. No, I was always taking initiative, like very early on, just making sure everything was done. I had, you know, my list of goals. I was going to do this by this age, you know. So I was a really like, I would say really driven kid. Um, I always made straight A's and like always was on the honor roll, was always trying to do everything the right way, you know, if you will. And so, um, that's what really, I think led to it. It was just something that I just always had done. Like it wasn't new to me. Hey, what are you good at? What do you want to do? What, you know, those are the questions that I was always asking myself. And I think that's why I did it. It was just second nature. Um, Just like, hey, you know, what are you good at? And um, my mom and them, they they didn't go to college. Like, I was first generation. So I had to do that. You know, I didn't have an option. It was like, either you're going to do this or you are going to be stuck behind because you don't have really a blueprint laid out ahead of you. You have to go figure it out on your own. So I kind of always took that approach because I just had to, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You got something? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I find a lot of times when we're walking in purpose or we feel like we are utilizing our gifts that I don't know what your faith is, but I I'm believe. A Christian. Okay, gotcha. Mm. <laughs> Good. Um, I believe that God send us, sends us signs, like as validation that we're on the right track. Mm-hmm. Can you point to anything recently that has confirmed to you that you're in the right space for the season that you're in right now? Oh my God, so many things. Um, <sighs> ooh, y'all, I'm breathing hard because I'm nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. <laughs> but okay, so so honestly speaking, um. You know, a lot of times I'm like, I do not feel like getting up yeah. this morning. Like, yeah. oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot <laughs> sake and waking up at 2 o'clock a.m. Yeah. This is crazy. Why are you doing this? But um, something is driving me every day to do it. And I and when, once I get out of bed and I step foot on ground, I'm like, this is me. I, I got it. Like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm here to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. When I get in front of that TV screen, I'm nervous talking to y'all. But when I get in front of that TV screen, I'm not nervous. Like, I'm, like, just doing it. It's almost like God is speaking through me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not me. Mm -hmm. I was the kid who was afraid to speak in front of the class, afraid Mm. to do Easter speeches. I thought about that on the way here. I'm like, oh, my God. It's so nerve-wracking. Because, like, my grandmother would put me up on stage every Easter, and I had to speak in front of the in front of the church, and I hated doing stuff like that. So I don't know. I can't really tell you, like, how am I doing it. I can just say that, like, something comes over me every single time. And so I know that I know that it's what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm not – I'm, this is not who I am, like, um, you know, this is not organically just me. It's mm-hmm. almost like an alter ego, you mm-hmm. know? Like, mm-hmm. so that's how I know that that is God, because I'm just like, who is this person, mm. you know? No, so. that's good. I have another question. Yeah. Um, we kind of just talked about this, um, about the alter ego thing. Like about the protection thing, and then we get to present exactly. as we want to present, and we get to hide the things that we want to hide. Do mm-hmm. you ever feel like you deal with that? Like because you're a visual, like you're a um, what is the word? A public figure mm-hmm. essentially. So people know and have certain perceptions of you and thoughts about you that may or may not be who you identify your real self to be. Um, do you feel like? Do you feel any pressure, I guess the first question, to be the person that you that people are perceiving you to be, that you're presenting as, that you have to present as? Mm-hmm. So 
here is where that becomes a real struggle. Um, it has been a struggle lately in dating mm. um, because I feel like people will see mm-hmm. who they see on television or whatever, mm-hmm. and they think that that's me. They're like, that's her, yeah. you know, 100%. And I would not say that's not me. When I right. said, like, it's an alter ego, I don't necessarily mean that's not who I am or, like, I'm just faking. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's 100% who I am, but it's just a piece of, a you. Piece of me. Right. We all have so many different layers as humans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's just a small layer. And I think, you know, a lot of times people fail to just see that, you know, for what it is like and understand, you know, yes, this person may appear to be this way on this particular platform, but, you know, when they're going home and the makeup comes off and, (laughs) you know, everything is stripped down to the bare minimum, can you accept who that person is? And that's what I find in trying to date has become like a little bit of an issue, if you will. It's like, uh, okay, you like this person and you thought that that was me and her name. That's we put her away. That's a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can open up this book and we got a lot of more pages yeah. to flip through. So um, I just, I think that's the thing that I struggle with is like, understanding and giving people grace when it comes to that because mm-hmm. you know I don't think that they mean any harm by it you know they, right they they just think what they think and and you have to understand you know just like you want people to understand that that's not all of you I have to understand that this is what they were presented with right and so you can't necessarily be upset at either party mm-hmm. so that's understandable. That's yeah. good. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah, Kyle. I love it. it because I think so many times, um, and I talk about this all the time, a lot of people see Kyle the coach or Kyle the entrepreneur or Kyle the, you know, the figure, the author, the leader, but you don't really see Kyle. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, like I'm an actual person here. Like mm-hmm. I have feelings or I have emotions or I have things that I struggle with. And I think so many times, even as influencers or as public figures, we have to put on mm-hmm. for our profession but when I get done with that profession, I want to turn off. Yeah. Can mm-hmm. you can you accept me when I'm off? Right. As much as you loved me when I was on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question for you earlier, you stated that essentially you've always kind of done things the right way because mm-hmm. um, you didn't have an option. You know, first generation parents didn't go to school. You wanted to be the best. You were a curious mind to figure out like, hey, how can I take this situation? But make it not only the best, but make, you know, create the best version of myself as well. So I guess my question though, what are some of the things that you've recognized that you don't have the answers to? Mm, So much, (laughs) so much. Um, So I just turned 30. Okay. Um, Shout out. Yeah, 30 years old. (laughs) It's a milestone, right? So yeah, I, I just turned 30 and I, um, you know, I guess like getting to this point, I would have even in my career thought like, oh, I got it all figured out. I know everything. You know, as I said, I'm always trying to do the right things, always trying to stay ahead of the curve. But it's just like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, the other side of that is like, what is staying ahead? You know, like give yourself grace. It's okay to fall sometimes. It's okay to not be perfect. You know, I'm just realizing that at 30 years old that, you know, being perfect is overrated. Like you can, (laughs) you can definitely make a couple mistakes. In Mm -hmm. fact, people may accept and like you more, Mm -hmm. uh, for that. And so I think, um, a lot of times, you know, a part of getting older and getting uh, wiser is understanding that, you know, we're human. We make mistakes. We're not going to have all of the answers. We're not going to know every single step that we're going to take. We're not going to know, you know, how to get to the next step in our careers all the time. You just have to, you know, come to the table with that drive and determination and be you and be authentic and just hope that it just continues to work out a lot of times. So I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned is like just giving myself grace. 
understanding that it's not always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's okay, you know? Yeah, that's solid. I think um, one thing that really stuck out to me that you said today is that it's kind of like you have so many pages, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people only see us at one level or one layer, but there's so many pages because we're all books at the end of the day. Our experiences, all of those serve as pages in our overall story. What is the one page that you keep going back to that you need to close so that you can move forward in your life? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Um, wow. Um, I think as of recent, I would say it's probably, so, hey, I was doing my career job in my hometown um, at 25, I believe, is when I got to Jacksonville and Jacksonville, Florida. That market is uh, pretty big mm. to be you know, 25. So it was market 40, I believe, 45, something around there. And we all know in media, there's like 230 markets. So to be in market 45 at 25 is like, okay, you kind of doing a little something. (laughs) I'm at home, I'm presenting in front of family. So it was like really amazing. Mm. But I think I may have gotten there too early. Mm. Talk more about that. Now looking back, I think I may have gotten there too early. I ultimately end up quitting Mm. my job. Um, So I was there. I had a three-year contract. And, (laughs) y'all, I don't know if I ever talked about this. (laughs) Especially on the air. But I had a three-year contract, and I ended up going to my news director and telling my news director and my HR team that I wanted to get out of that contract at two month, two years, and I believe it probably was like nine months. Mm. So I was so close yeah. to wow. the end. And I told them, hey, I'm done. And I won't say that it's necessarily was the wrong thing to do because, you know, we never want to have any regrets, mm-hmm. but I still feel like I could have, A, finished. I mean, I was so close. And B, like, um, the reason that I left or the reasons weren't really, they weren't really big enough. You know what I mean? Like, now looking back, I'm like, okay, you deal with that in TV. Like, this is news. You're going to have that to happen everywhere. And that meaning just, like... I mean, I was like, ooh, running around every single day. I had breaking news um, to cover. It was a really heavy breaking news market. So I had a lot of breaking news, a lot of just um, just really the stories would, like, stick with you because they were so heavy. I mean, it was like murder and crime and this and that. And I just, I think I just, now looking back, was not probably ready um, or didn't expect it to be that heavy, you know. So I ended up just getting burnt out. That's the best way I can describe it. And I was like, okay, I'm out of news. Like I went and started working at AT and T for like maybe it was like eight months or so um, until I could find something. And I had people telling me like mentors, oh, you're not gonna be able to get back in. You don't even have a tape. Mm-hmm. You know, like why'd you? do that (laughs) like oh my goodness so here I am thinking okay my career is probably over and then I get an opportunity this is at 25 26 years old that's at 25 so I was there until I was 27 ish 28 okay Okay. and then I got the call from Charlotte Mm -hmm. I had applied a few places just a few and got a call in Charlotte which is a bigger market Mm -hmm. um You know, a a progressive city, you know, this, I just hear really good things about Charlotte. I've only been here for a year, so I'm still learning, but just so much opportunity here. And to me, a blessing, you know what I mean? Like to, to quit and be out of the business and then have one news director to believe in you and Mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I told her the truth that I left, you know? 
she just said, I'm going to take a chance. And mm-hmm. I'm still here. So it's it's really a blessing in disguise, like, yeah. now that I look back. But I do believe sometimes we can get opportunities too early and mismanage the opportunity if we get it too early. So That's good. I just feel like looking back, I'm like, mm, you probably were a little ungrateful, probably were a little young, probably didn't understand all of what came with what you were doing and the calling. You know, we talk about it now. And so now looking back, I feel like that's something that I'm like, I need to close that chapter and forgive myself for making that mistake or whatever you want to call it. But um I don't know. I think it's still open because maybe it's teaching me a lesson. So I don't know. It teaches me and humbles me and tells me, you know, hey, you got out of this. It was a second chance, you know, waiting for you. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Just like tread light, you know, be thankful for where you are. Understand, you know, why you're where you are. Um It's just one of those things where I want to close the door because I don't want to keep banging myself for hanging up that opportunity. But at the same time, like I said, I may still be holding on to that memory just to keep me grounded and grateful, you know, for where I am. It's it's so much packed in this, right? Um, (laughs) Because you started off with communicating how, you know, growing up, you were very Mm self-aware and you were you were the golden kid in a sense, straight A student always driven, you know, honor roll student, you know, you've got these great opportunities um, and you've always done the right things, right? And it's interesting that the one page that you keep flipping back to is a wrong decision that you made. So there's a, a level of pressure there. Mm-hmm. So I guess my question, I could, I could ask this two ways, but I guess my <laughs> question is the reasoning that you communicated out loud to whether it be your parents or whoever asked, of why you left was that the true reason of what you were telling yourself so or was there a disconnect in actually the reason why you left that career so i think because obviously the first people i called when i went to make that decision was my parents because i wanted them to be aware and i wanted them to give me advice you know if they could and i remember in that moment speaking to my mom and she immediately was saying no do not do it. Don't quit. Like, are you crazy? In mm-hmm. fact, <laughs> and then my stepdad, she just ends up giving the phone to my stepdad. And he was on the phone saying, you know, you have to do what you really want to do. He's like, wow. what is your what is your heart telling you to do? And I'm like, it's telling me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, okay, leave. He's like, right now, leave. And I'm like, are you are you for real? <laughs> he's like, yeah. Like, if if that's what you want to do in your heart, he's like, I support everything you want to do. Mm-hmm. Do what you want to do because I know that if you are meant to be doing this, you're gonna have another opportunity. So he was just like, do what you really want to do, and I and I ended up listening to him and I did it. Um, And I told them the reason why I was doing it was because I was just so tired and frustrated. By that time, I was still working weekends. A lot of people had come into the job and just started and was getting Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday positions. So I just felt a little trapped. Mm -hmm. But um, again, now looking back, it just was all how it was working. I was looking at it a little you know, uh, skewed, I would say. I don't think I was taking it for what it was and accepting, you know, that that's just the business. Sometimes you have to pay your dues. You know what I'm saying? You might have to work the weekends and you may be bringing the best stories. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Your time is your time. When it's time for you to move off, you will move off. No matter what a boss says or, you know, an assistant manager, it doesn't matter. When it's time for you to move, you will move. And I just didn't understand that concept at that time. But now I absolutely do. So I'm going to (laughs) change the subject a little bit. Um, Earlier you were talking about basically just kind of expectations that people have, you Mm -hmm. know, for you based on your public persona Mm -hmm. and things like that. What's one expectation you feel that other people have for you that you don't want to meet? 
Hmm. I think. That's good. It is good. <laughs> Y'all are hitting me. This <laughs> is hitting me. Seriously, it's making me dig deep. Um, so something that something that people want me to do that I don't necessarily always want to do is be. I would say just be really refined and all the time. Yeah, really refined and and super professional, which is nothing wrong with being professional. <laughs> Let me make that clear. But um, it's tiring, right? Yeah, sometimes you know you want to let your hair down. You want to be relaxed. You want to be able to have conversations and not say, "Hey, don't bring up this topic." Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, so those are the things that I sometimes wish didn't exist with being a news anchor or reporter. Um, but then again, I, I understand why, you know, those boundaries and limits are there because we are supposed to be very unbiased and mm-hmm. very neutral and very trustworthy. So I think that is to protect us. Um, but I'm learning how to navigate it. Again, being in a business for a little bit longer you can still have conversations and still let your hair down, still be fun, still be relatable, but still be professional. So I think it just, you know, it's another finesse you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with you saying finesse that you have to do, is there a lot of times that you find yourself blending your professional career in actual personal relationships where you're finessing it and not truly being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent? And you're taking the skills that you've learned as a reporter and integrating that within personal relationships and not allowing them to see who you really are. So I think naturally I am an introverted person, like take the reporter away. Um, I think I am kind of reserved, you know, as a person. So I don't necessarily feel like it's hard for me to be reserved because I'm just like Mm -hmm. that in general. Um, But I do think um, do I want to sometimes like I don't know like share more on social media like for example like (laughs) my mom and my dad and my brother they're a big part of me like Mm -hmm. I'm a very family oriented person and so just having to sometimes be like okay okay I'm not gonna put that picture Mm because it may show them in this light or whatever I feel like that's even like too much sometimes. I'm like, why can't I just post a picture <laughs> without thinking about it? Yeah. Like, I just want to post my family. Yeah. But I can't always do that because then people will try to figure out who Find they them. are uh-huh. and go at them. Mm-hmm. And then my brother is 17, so Lord knows what he got on his page. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, you know, I think of those things a lot and I'm like, if I weren't doing this job, I absolutely would not care about stuff mm. like that. But, I mean, because I am doing it, I have to. And I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. But I do think sometimes people want to know a little bit more. Like, mm-hmm. they, and and they can. They can. But I think I'm very guarded in who I let in <laughs> 100%. So, um I don't know. It's just, it's a mystery, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) That's interesting. And we're going to go on commercial break. I figured it was coming. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are back with our Fox 46 reporter. (laughs) (laughs) On the hot seat. (laughs) On the hot seat currently. So, Kyle, where did you want to go? Because you know where I'm about to go. Nah, nah, no. Go. Before we switch it up, because <laughs> any of our audience members, they you know, know where at this go. time we switch it up. <laughs> but before we do that, before we do that, I think a lot of a lot of this conversation has been about realization, self-awareness, um, being able to be right, but recognizing how to deal when you are wrong or make wrong decisions um, as a part of the bigger message, identifying, understanding um, and really realizing the power of your story, right? Mm-hmm. And you've spent a lifetime, not a lifetime, not yet, but a <laughs> career 
and capturing breaking news and capturing other people's stories. So my question for you is that you talked about earlier as well in regards to expectations that aren't met and people wanting you to be something that you're not fully as well. You know, you don't always want to be on all the different times. So my question, what is the story in your life that was the breaking news that shaped you to be who you are? Or what is the story in your life that you would need people to know that would best describe who you are today? Hmm. So that was a little more easy. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So I think looking on the surface, not a lot of people could tell or know or would come to the realization that I'm like, I'm like a country girl with a <laughs> with a with like the average story of like a a black child. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom and dad, they had me when they were 19 years old. They were in school, babies, probably didn't know enough about each other. You know what I'm saying? And then they had they had me. Um, my mom and dad were never together. They were never married. So my mom raised me. My dad was there, but I had to go see him on the weekends. You know what I mean? So, and then my grandmother, my grandmother, his mother helped him a lot. So I would be like with my grandmother and my aunt when I would see my dad. So like, it's just one of those same stories, you know what I'm saying? Like that you hear in black families, like just that typical like single black mother raising her child wow. and like my mom is that like 100%. So she is like if you meet my mom, you wouldn't think that that's my mother. Like my <laughs> mom. <laughs> listen, she she wouldn't do anything like this cuz she would be totally nervous, but like just talking to y'all like she is like her name is Tasha. Like, she's Tasha. No, she's, Tasha. <laughs> she's Tasha. She's embraced the name. <laughs> she has embraced the name. She is 100% like the fun girl. The mm. She is opposite of me. Very outgoing. The life of the party. So, like, I think people meeting me would think I come from, like, maybe a two-parent household mm. and just, like, had it all together. Like, no, I went to school at a place called S.A. Hall. It was right in the heart of... Uh, Sutel, North Jacksonville. Jacksonville, you know, you think of the beaches. No, 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 no. Nah, they give it up in Jacksonville. Honey, <laughs> Duval County <laughs> is where I'm from. So, like, I think that's the side of me that people don't really know, meeting me in media, you know. But, but people, when I worked at home, that was the interesting thing of working at home. They would call me Des. Like everybody was like, that's Des. Oh, that's Tasha daughter. That's Craig daughter. Like that's Spencer daughter. So like that that side of me, I think meeting me in media, you would think it is opposite, but it's it's totally the the story of, you know, single black mom raising her child up and ended up, you know, doing a really good job. So I think, you know, it's just one of those things that makes you look at life like what was so different about your life mm-hmm. that made you go down this path versus your friend went down this path. And it's like nothing, mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely nothing. When you think about. <clears throat> That's why you looked at me. <laughs> no, nah, I know, I know, I know. When, when, you, when you think about um, everything that you've experienced, right? You've highlighted a lot of the. Um, the, the experiences where you've overcame different things to be able to put you into the position that you're in today. Mm-hmm. I guess my question is what are what is what decision personally are you least proud of and what steps did you take to be able to overcome that decision? Decision that I'm least proud of. Hmm. So something that kind of bothers me that I now speaking out loud, I have never thought about this either or talked about it, (laughs) Um, was not getting to know my father more. You know, like I feel like my father, my biological father, he is 
he he is a part of me. You know what I'm saying? When you think of destiny, you had your mom, Tasha, and your dad, Spencer. What, you know, those two came together and made you this being that people see as phenomenal and, uh, you know, just somebody who's a public figure and, you know, doing all these great things. It was his DNA that made that person. So I feel like a lot of credit goes to him, you know, and I don't know enough about my father. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about him. I need to really try to, I wouldn't say mend that relationship relationship because it's not a bad relationship. It's just one that hasn't been developed. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think if anything, I need to go back and try to see like what I can do. Because I see him working and trying to call me and contact me and, you know, get to know me a little bit more. But I'm not as, I'm about to tear up. That's all good. (laughs) I'm not as forthcoming, you know, and I'm not as available. So I need to make make time for that. And that's something that I want to do. Ugh, I want to go to the box, but now that you've done this, I feel like I no, have a question. No, it's okay. I, I've never talked <laughs> about it, so I didn't know I was going to cry, y'all. But. It's all good. Um, let me ask one more question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know that you acknowledge him as part of, mm-hmm. you know, you, know, you mm-hmm. and then you seem to um outwardly appear that you didn't have any kind of void because you still had your stepfather you still had your mom you still had your father's your biological father's mother and sister i think you Mm -hmm. said they were very much a part of yeah yeah but i do know that a lot of times when people don't have both parents um or you you don't have a a strong of a relationship with one you find yourself it's probably going a different way than what you think you find yourself (laughs) Um, finding characteristics of the person, the family member that is the the relationship is not as strong. Mm -hmm. You find those characteristics in people that you date. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I'm wondering if you have seen that at all. So I would say that I would argue that I don't. Again, I don't know enough to know to know because and I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't know my dad. I know mm-hmm. my dad, you know, like I could tell you he's more reserved. So that's probably where I get the reserves. Uh-huh. By. Um, I could tell you that he is, you know, um, he's a hard worker, cares mm-hmm. about his family, you know, just like you. I can tell you the typical mm-hmm. things, but, um, you know, the things that he struggles with per se, I wouldn't be able to tell you a lot of because he has his own family. So he has my stepmom. He got married. So my stepmom has three kids. So mm. he has his like his mm-hmm. own family. You know what I mean? So like I've, I've never like. Let me ask you this. Do you attract distant people that are either like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm 30 years old, don't have. a a spouse or a significant other that's something that really bothers me and something that I feel like you know I want to absolutely change Mm -hmm. but I'm having I'm having trouble Mm -hmm. yeah finding somebody who wants to be here and wants to put up with every side of me you know and wants to um get to know me for who I really am you know on the inside and not just what I appear to be or my job Mm -hmm. so those are the things that you know I do find I do find to be difficult Mm -hmm. when you say distant I guess you would mean somebody who's not sticking around for the long term and (laughs) honey they are not Mm -hmm. (laughs) they're sticking around so um yeah Mm. this is good (laughs) And before we transition to the box, anybody that's listening right now, whether it be on YouTube or on all of the podcast channels, if you are a man, (laughs) I'm going to tell you something, that's here for the long term, that is here for the long term, baby. You cannot be distant. Oh not my distant. God. You got to be caring, you loving. Be committed. Go read the Bible a few times. Yes, Lord <laughs> Jesus. Please In Jesus' come name. <laughs> Literally. So go ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Um, 
Coincidentally. Okay, so this is the red box in the middle of the table. Hmm. Um, so there are questions inside of this box. Ooh. <laughs> um, I don't know which one you'll get, but typically you get the question that you need. So mm. read the que- pick a question, read it, answer it for us, please. Oh, Lord. Y'all are so yeah. <laughs> oh, scary. Okay. <laughs> if you could relive one year of your life knowing what you know now, which year would that be? Oh my goodness. This is what you I just always get the about. question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just talked about it kind of prematurely. <laughs> so it would be that year that I left Channel 4. And for those people who are back at home, everybody knows about the experience. But it was back in 2019, I believe that's when it was when I left. Um, and knowing what I know now would absolutely help me because, I mean, I just know that, you know, as I said, sometimes you have to pay your dues. Sometimes you're not going to get the sweet gig initially, you know, no matter how much work you're putting in. Because I think that was the part that was bothering me the most. I knew, like, well, I'm bringing the exclusive stories. I'm... I'm one of the top reporters. They call on me for these particular stories. Why am I not moving to this Monday through Friday main gig? And, you know, as I said now, I know that your time is your time. No matter what it is that you're doing, you can apply this to any part of your life. Your time is absolutely your time. When it's your time, nobody can stop you. No boss, Mm -hmm. no manager, no nobody. So I just am a strong believer in that now, and it just helps. You know, it helps me navigate every single day. I know, like, when I go to work, no matter what I do that can be, like, extra or not so good, if it's time for me to be in a particular place, I'm going to be there. So since the box gave you that question, I believe that there is more there. So, that's one of the questions I just added today. Um, so, when you think about that year, 2019, what else was happening in your life during that year outside of your job? A lot. Um, that was the, I would say, just to give a snippet, that was the year. That was the first year that I had lived with someone who was, of a different sex. So, really? Yes. So I had lived with my boyfriend um, and we ended up not ultimately being together. But I think, you know, it, just dealing with all of that mm-hmm. and everything that came with that. And when I say everything, so much. Um, so dealing with, you know, your personal battles and then, you know, your work stuff too, Mm -hmm. you sometimes may pull the trigger a little fast because Mm -hmm. you have burdens you're carrying personally as well. So I think, you know, that contributed to me leaving absolutely. I'm like, I got to get out. I got to leave everything. 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 Start over. Fresh, brand new. And so, can I ask one more question? Nah, I just think it's interesting because we hit on that earlier. She missed over that well, one. If you don't ask, you Word. don't get it. The box, the box said, Go ahead. come back. <laughs> so I didn't hear that. <laughs> um, what is one thing that you think you needed during that time that you didn't receive or that nobody realized you needed? God, <laughs> y'all are on point. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. This is like scary because it's so. It's so good. <laughs> um, I needed. I needed people to, because being at home, you know, and on that kind of a platform, people started to treat you mm. like you're on this platform uh-huh. that we talked about. We had this conversation. And people started to forget that I was Des. Mm. I was, you know, Tasha's daughter. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, you know, people don't understand that you want to be treated like a person. (laughs) Like just a normal, you know, everyday, hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. How are you? You know, that Mm -hmm. that would help. And I, I wasn't getting a lot of that. I was getting a lot of... 
you know, oh my God, you're a superstar. I saw you on TV today. You look good. You look great. Everything's great. Oh my God, you are like killing it. You're doing amazing. And so you have to be great then in response to that. So you better be great. Yeah. Listen, you better be great. You better show up great. You better always be on. You mm-hmm. better, you know, and at again, 25, 26, you're like, can I just go out and party with my friends for one day? <laughs> like, exactly. can I do something that a, a typical 26-year-old would be doing at this time? You know, so I think in a lot of ways I had to grow up a little fast, mm-hmm. you know. So those are the things that I was missing, just that just that fun, you know. And I think right now I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm realizing, you know, you can – you can be professional and have your career, but still go out with your friends and mm-hmm. have fun and still like go to church and be extra holy. They call it what? Hood and holy. They got, <laughs> <laughs> they got the t-shirts and stuff now. Look, you can do all of it. You can have all of it. You don't have to separate. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is all encompassing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm learning how to navigate that more. But I needed to know that then. Mm. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I know, I know. So <laughs> I guess a, a lot of times, because you're a very spiritual woman, I can tell. Um, a lot of times before God gives us a major blessing, we go through a breaking point. Mm-hmm. And, and and just in my experience and just in my life personally, a lot of times when I was asking for things, I, I was stripped of everything before I actually received the thing that I was asking for, but it was really multiplied because I asked for a little, but he provided a lot. Mm-hmm. When was your breaking point? Would it be 2019? I would say, because when I tell you I was I was making X, Y, Z, and when I quit that job, I didn't even realize like, okay, you still got bills that you were mm-hmm. paying with with this money. And so... Obviously, I still had my bills, but I didn't have all the money. So I would be like, I was stripped from living this way to now rock bottom. Like having to not go without because my family was there, but having to kind of go without in a sense. You know, I'm not able to do what I was able to do. So that was hard and humbling. Exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot of times after that breaking point period and we look back so that we could be able to continue to progress forward, there's still burdens that we're carrying, right? There's still not pages that we keep reopening, but burdens that we're carrying that won't really allow us to move forward because they're still weighing us down um, as we're trying to walk forward, right? So when you think of different things like in that season, in your breaking point, season in that 2019 year, you didn't have the authenticity. You didn't have the, just the genuine relationships. You didn't have people to see you Mm -hmm. um, and see behind the actual cameras. So I guess my question now in 2021 is what are some of the burdens that you're carrying or what are some of the, er where are some of the areas that you're actually really struggling? Um, so I don't know if this is actually related to 2019 or if this just is just something that I struggle with in general but I would say I definitely need to get better at trusting people and understanding that not everyone is there to hurt or harm or take away or benefit and profit in their own way um, and leave you hanging in high, high to dry. You know, like some people actually want you to succeed. Some people actually want to help you. Some people are actually around for your benefit. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing right now for me is being more trusting. <laughs> you know, just, uh, and if it doesn't work out and then that person doesn't end up being who they said they were, that's on them. Mm. That's not on you. You know, you were authentic enough to allow them to be a part of your world and it didn't work and it's okay. But at least, you know, you took the opportunity, you know? So I think just letting that layer of protection down, I have a really thick guard sometimes. I can tell. (laughs) (laughs) When you think about that story that you were just thinking about, Mm -hmm. um, describing your challenge with continuing to trust people. What happened? How did it make you feel? And what was the realization? Hmm. 
I think for me, it is the continuance of like relationships not working. That has to be the biggest thing because my family is 100% trusting, always Mm -hmm. there, you know, very supportive, everything. Um, But just allowing these strangers, if you will, you know, these people you meet um, into your life and opening up and and building a life with them or hoping to. And then it ends up not being anything and you never speak again. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that kind of make you say, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Because I think as a child, you don't grow up expecting that some of the relationships you have or have built will not be there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like I always grew up like, oh, this is my friend. They're going to be my friend forever, Mm -hmm. you know, or this is my aunt. She's going to be in my life forever. This is my um, cousin. He's going to be in my life forever. And that's just absolutely not the truth. Once you grow Mm -hmm. up, you realize that people start to fall off for whatever reason (laughs) And you have to keep going with life. Mm. And so, um, you know, I I heard it somewhere before. It's like mourning people who are still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's a hard concept. It's hard for me, at least. And um, that's why I feel like I'm guarded. Because I'm like, oh, no, you can't get close to me because you might not be here in Mm. a year. And that's not, you know, it's not good. You don't know. They may be around in a year. You just got to see. Would you say that there are some current relationships in your life right now as you're moving into this next season um, that need to fall off? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is What is stopping you from actually cutting the cord? Mm. (sighs) Um, Not having all I need within, I guess. Like, just not being complete and thinking that it would be lonely if I didn't have these people around. Um, So that's, I would say that's probably the biggest thing. It's like, understand, you know, even if it may be lonely, it may still be better (laughs) better. (laughs) if you didn't have this person. So, um, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I know a lot of times when relationships or any situation continues to not work, we start to tell ourselves something about ourselves that may or may not be true, but it's what we have come to believe based on the situation at hand. Is there anything that you're now telling yourself about yourself that may or may not be true? Yeah. And and it may or may not be true. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I think the biggest thing I told myself is, yeah, you may be you may be a little too guarded, or you may be a little um, too reserved. Because a lot of times I would hear like things like, "Well, I wanted to I wanted you to hang out with my friends, or I wanted to introduce you to my friends, and you just seemed like you didn't really care, or you seemed like you didn't really mm-hmm. want to be there. And it's like, no, because I absolutely didn't feel that way in my mind, you know? So it's just like, what am I giving off that's making me appear to be that way? Let so me, that's what I need to I want to ask out. you something, because I feel this way often about myself. Um, sometimes I'll hear people say, Oh, I just, I, I, not, I love you, but like people don't often say I love you, um, but um, <laughs> everybody's telling me they, they love me. Um, or people would be like, I love being around you or I love talking to you or, um, see me as like a really, really close friend. And a lot of times I don't necessarily see the other person the same way. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, how can you feel this way about me when you don't know me that well? Because I am a private person. So I know you don't know me that well. Mm-hmm. Does that ever block you from being able to connect with people because you know, like inside that they, you haven't given them a chance to fully know you? So how can what they be saying, these feelings they have towards you be real? Yeah. How are they valid? Yeah. Um, yeah. In friendships a lot because... I think, you know, I initially I am a little more guarded. And so, yeah, when people are like, 
just just what you just say. Yeah, I I really enjoy being around you. I think you know you're so much fun. It's like how how do you feel like that? Yeah, um, how I haven't said anything or done anything. <laughs> I've just simply been around. <laughs> but I think I think it's the aura, you know. And and sometimes we don't give ourselves credit, but like. You know, vibes are real. Mm-hmm. Like people, people can get a certain vibe from a person, and they never have to say anything. It's mm-hmm. just like your vibe speaks for itself. So when you have good energy and good vibes, that attracts people. And I'm starting to notice that a lot. Like, and I'm not bragging, but I think my energy is is great. Like <laughs> I feel like so. It's just like yeah, people are gonna want to be around. Um, but again, you just have to always. No one understand, I guess, that, you know, people are around for a season sometimes and it's not always, you know, going to be forever. So you got to mm-hmm. be willing to let go when it's time to let go. What you writing, Kyle? We're going to go on a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> I think Kyle was doodling something on his uh, notebook. <laughs> so as... nah, literally, literally. I think so many times, man. Like this has been such a great conversation, by the way. Um, it's it's interesting to see people online and actually see people mm-hmm. in oh, person, yeah. right? Um, I think it's it's created a different, like we were talking, energy. Right. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like energies are kind of like cords and they're connected. Oh, yeah. So I, I look forward to continuing to connect with beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Right. I think in the season that you were in, just to kind of go back to go forward, um, you grew up very reflective. Right. In 2019, you didn't identify what you really needed until later. So that we prevent those things from happening and you getting to another breaking point before um, it needs to happen. What would you identify in this season that you really need that you're not getting? Hmm. I think I need more conversations like this. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 100%. Because it helped me. I don't know, like, if it's helping y'all, listen, I have no idea, but it's helping me, it's helping me, like, I'm just like, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to, you know, work on this relationship, I need to let go of this person, mm. quite frankly, um, so it's helping to have this conversation, and I think, um, you know, while we have these great people on these platforms, we got to continue asking them questions see if they're well you know Mm -hmm. like talk to them in an open space just about what they're doing what they have on what's on their hearts Mm -hmm. you know because we're people (laughs) like when y'all say public figure i'm like listen (laughs) i am destiny (laughs) mckeever (laughs) like that's it. And I think a lot of times people don't see that. Mm-hmm. So it would be great to continue having more conversations like this. So when you said that people want to talk about what's on your heart. Right? Mm-hmm. What's on yours? <sighs> what's on my heart right now is thank God that I met these two. Because <laughs> like, oh, y'all you make me cry. I know. I know. <laughs> such a cry baby that's the thing and I try to keep it together but I'm like y'all making me cry and stuff like this is too much but I'm just like thank god I had this conversation you know today I was late (laughs) I was just like kind of over it in the car because I'm like oh god here I am late to another late to another thing you know and that kind of stuff weighs on you. You're like, what can I do better? Like, I need to, <laughs> I need to start, you know, my day earlier, or I need to do this and I need to do that. But I came in. I say that to say I came in with kind of like, you know, um, not feeling the best, yeah. not feeling 100 percent about what was going to happen. And then I'm here and I feel good. I feel like, gosh, it's it's been. Great. This has been a good conversation. So I think, you know, um, 
that was on my heart to say, like, thank y'all for doing this. I appreciate that. that <laughs> I makes, appreciate that it. That makes me happy, too. I feel like... Um, I feel like God just works so in such mysterious, you know, they say that God works in mysterious ways. And I think it's so true because normally when we plan these, Kyle has them packed back to back to back. And there's no, not thanks. a lot of space in between. <laughs> like, I think at one point today we had them and they're like an hour, literally an hour apart. Yeah. So I feel like before you came, it was ordained that like we would need time. So mm -hmm. you were late, but we still needed time to thanks. get to the conversation that needed to happen. So mm -hmm. I feel like he he works a lot of times on our behalf through yeah. people and we don't know it. No, so that's facts. Yeah. I think um, one last thing that I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talked a lot today about amazing topics. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, and I sense that this is going to be a challenging question to answer, but I believe oh, that dear. you'll answer it amazingly as well. Who are you without your title? Without your degree, without your pain, mm -hmm. if this was the last time we were sitting here having this conversation, and for all of the people that hopefully I don't get emotional, <laughs> hopefully it's for okay. all of the, for all of the people, <laughs> Come on. for all of the people that didn't see you in 2019, for all of the men that didn't see you throughout your life, who are you, and who would you want them to meet? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, I am, I'm just, I'm just uh, really a work in progress. Um, just somebody who is just eager has a really, really, really big heart, huge heart. Um, wants the best um, in life for me and everybody around me. And just, you know, always on a mission to do the right thing and what's best. Like, so I just, I want people to understand that, you know, while I do have these titles, ultimately, I'm just I'm just learning and growing and I need y'all as much as you may need me. You know, I just I need community. Mm -hmm. Um so that's it really just like I'm not I'm not on an island, you know, I'm here. I want to be I want to be available. I want to be accessible. I want to be more of whoever you need, you know? So I'm just existing for you. And I want, you know, my people to keep existing for me. And I just want to help. And I want to be helped. What you got? <laughs> oh, this is great. No, it is. This is a lovely it conversation. It's, it's, it really it's is. Been, it's been a, um, a refreshing mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. Um you know, from testimonies to tears, right? <laughs> um. And I'm a cry baby, so I shouldn't know I was going to cry. But for some reason, I'm thinking I'm going to come in here and talk about, oh, I've been doing this for nine years. Right, right, nah. right. It's not you know, that it's, place. It's interesting because we base, oh, you know, you're 30, right? Mm -hmm. And you would have <laughs> you would have based your whole life off of nine years instead of the 21 other years that made you the woman that you are today. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times we base the years of our career based upon how we're presenting ourselves to the world, not allowing the world to actually get to know the person behind those years in that profession. Yeah. And I think, you know, in any audience member that's listening today, we've, we've realized the person we've met the actual woman behind the, the television screen. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've been able to experience the importance of reflection We've been able to experience the port, the importance of having those crucial conversations in order to get to know the people that we were um, wanting to meet before it's too late for us to meet them. We've, we've realized the importance of not only setting expectations um, in our relationships, but not allowing anybody within our relationships that need to be cut from the branches in our life mm -hmm. or from the tree of our life as well. Um, 
your testimony. Your testimony, and you're so much more than just a reporter. You're so much more than just on television. You're so much more than just a public figure. Thank you. You're a person. You're a beautiful being, right? Thank you. Um, and a lot of the things that we overlook, we should help each other affirm. Mm -hmm. This is Around the Way podcast, and we'll see you guys next episode.